Okay, in this week's recap, the White House makes plans to reopen the economy as analysts examine the first hard economic data reckoning the U.S. reaction to COVID-19. Life is too short to worry about what the next headline could do to your life savings. Hi, my name is Eric Hagan and I keep my thumb on the pulse of the economy and the markets so my clients can focus on the things that are actually important to them. Thank you for joining me the next few minutes on today's weekly economic video update. Stock prices pushed higher last week as news of a White House plan to reopen the economy and reports of a potential COVID-19 treatment helped the market overcome weak economic data and an ugly start to the corporate earnings season. The Dow Jones Industrials average rose 2.21%, while the Standard & Poor's 500 advanced 3.04%. The NASDAQ Composite Index gained 6.09% for the week, and the MSCI EFI Index, which tracks developed overseas stock markets, slumped 1.75%. Until last week, the extent of the economic damage from COVID-19 lacked a lot of hard data. With the release of retail sales, which were down 8.7% for March, industrial production down 5.4% in March, and new jobless claims of 5.2 million people, bringing the four-week total to over 22 million. The scope of economic trouble became clearer. Stocks wavered throughout the week as investors digested the economic data and balanced the reports against signs that the pandemic may have peaked. With news of a plan to restart the economy and promising test results of a COVID-19 treatment, market sentiment turned positive, sending stocks higher on the final day of trading and cementing the second consecutive week of gains. Large banks kicked off the quarterly earnings season reporting declines in profits as they hiked loan loss reserves and saw a contraction in consumer credit card use. The large loan loss reserves represent a sobering view of just how much the banks believe small businesses and consumers may be affected by the economic downturn. And in this week's final thought, with bank earnings reports last week, investors got an important but limited view of the state of the economy. This week's earnings reports are expected to provide a much broader cross-section of the economy with a number of consumer products, technology, industrial, transportation, and consumer services companies reporting. Hey, this is Eric again. That's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. To learn how I give my clients life savings the attention it deserves, visit me online at www.erichagan.pro. If you'd like to get financially organized, go check out nocostfinancialdashboard.com. And lastly, if you'd like to take control of your 401k at work, visit us over at 401kinvestmentpros.com. Thank you again for your time today. I'll look for you next week.